about Shakespeare's meter. <laughs> and, then, and some people smiled and there were some people who were like, uh, oh, uh, oh, <laughs> Sorry, Yeah. Hello there. This is the third. Is it DJ? Yeah. Two will sleep now, 9.30. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hello, guys. Okay. Hello. 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 I'm good. Tony, you should be here. Greg might be here. I'm not sure he's going to be here. Yes, he's by you see why I love Jessica? I tried to point, she wasn't drunk at all. You're like, dude, I will never be that drunk. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Like a head and a half taller than I am. Yes, I'm probably like I always sit on my foot. I'm all in life. Now, am I taller than Chris now? Am I taller? Yeah. Am I taller now? Am I so tall? I am. Okay, she's a star, but just let it roll. Tony. I don't know what he's going to be. I know, because Tony... He may never show up. Tony and I are the... Are old. Are old. Sweetheart, I've got socks old. I don't drink water. Um, I got socks on I'm wearing I think you're talking to me. I got socks on you and I'm wearing them. No, I've never taken them off. I, yeah, I've been like, I'm good. Um, do we need Tony's company? As far as I know. What time, what time is it? <laughs> yeah, okay, after? I next stupid. We need this is next stupid. Hi hey, Josh, how are you? Hi. Where are we? how are you? How are you? <laughs> Okay. Uh, you see what I have to put up with. <laughs> Chris loves us. Um, as much as he can put up with. Yeah, like, no, I love you. <laughs> you love everybody. See, that's why it doesn't mean that much, because you love freaking everybody. So for you for you to love Josh and I, it's like, and? Now, Crystal said that the other day. She said, you know, it was all sorts of nice guys. If you introduce me to someone, they're going to be a nice person. Hello, everybody, come in! Please come in. Hello, hello. I'm glad you're that is old. Yeah, that's not that old. I'm surprised. You guys know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. I don't do the internet. You, yeah, you're on You know, I just go on Facebook and say hi. You love a laugh for a lot. I would like to go on that. I should. Because I think it's a nice thing, you know, I'll show her in a lot of ways. Because otherwise, that's like kind of a stupid thing. I try to do it. 
trying to Oh, who's that? That's Katie. Hey, get out of here. Get out of Look at her walk. Uh, 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 uh. Hey, girl. What's up? Hey. Hey. So, Caitlin and I went to this place in Austin called Pinballs with a Z. And it's like, it's called an old fashioned arcade, but it's, it's an arcade. And Caitlin and her now husband, at the time fiance, were playing DDR. And at first I was like, oh, this is going to be so cute, you know? They'll probably put it on like low level or whatever. Because they were like, oh, we haven't played in a while. I'm like, okay. Let me tell you something. Those two? On the DDR thing? They were like, oh. it was out of control. You were out of control. And I have pictures to prove it. So, I took a lot of pictures of your butt. Your butt looked very nice DDR you. It really it was a nice one. I'm just saying. Okay, here's the thing. This is I tried DDR once. How'd that go? Okay, here's the thing. Okay, you know this for a fact. I'm a professional choreographer. Yes, yes, and I, I can dance. I can get by you. I can, you know, you've been choreographed more than once by me. I, uh, you know, I, I'm a professional choreographer. I can dance my butt off. I nearly broke my ankle trying to do it. <laughs> I, I really, I, I couldn't walk for like three days. I could barely walk for three days. Hello, it's Teddy. Hello, Teddy. Hey, look who it is, Teddy. That. Yes. Hi there! Howdy, howdy. No, sorry, I don't think it's my movie yet. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it, it happens. I'll like pillow over you. Greetings and salutations, all. Hey, Lynn, will you get some pictures when you start Gavin? Send me some. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Come in, come in! Jessica, this is not like the roast. We, they, uh, just recently... She was pretty tame. No, no, but just recently, um, they roasted me at, uh, my job the roast, Jessica was on the roast. And a policy that I inserted when I was roast master is that we always have all uh, the roasts uh, translated by, by sign language interpreter. So all of these drunken people took most of the roasts to see how many profane and vile and disgusting things they could get the sign linguists to uh, sign. <laughs> I like that with Tatum once. <laughs> okay, no, do, not, do, not, do not say what Tatum said that one time. No. <laughs> Actually, the worst thing that was uh, ever said at one of the roasts was, was Chris Sabat at his own roast, and I will not repeat it because it is definitely 18 plus material. <laughs> Sorry. I, I, I cannot, I cannot it. It's a family show, this is not, this is So this is, is, is this PG-13 at least? Guys, I can't do this. There's a slender man in the back. Oh my God. Oh my Thank you. Me in junior high. No, yeah, seriously. Yeah, I'm not, Chris Sabat and I went, grew up together actually. We had the same piano teacher. Let me just tell you something about Chris Sabat. God, he's talented. Chris Sabat can hear any music anywhere pop yeah. song, K pop, Bad American pop, uh, Beethoven. Country. And he will sit down at the piano and play it. It's absolutely mind blowing. Yeah. We had the same piano teacher, and I, I could only read music. I mean, it was very good, but I was all technical. Uh, I was all technique. And our piano teacher used to yell at Chris because he did not know how to read music and she would have to play it first. So she quit, eventually stopped playing for him and just be like, Chris, read the music. And he'd be like, but then I could read the music and I'd be like, la, la, la. But I'd get so mad because I wanted to do what he could do. But anyway, 
in junior high, Chris taught me what that very thing is. Ah. And I was horrified. And of course, we can't say it, but yeah, I'll whisper it to you in the hallway. Is it time to start yet? Because if not, I've got another Sabbath story. <laughs> you got time? Okay, we got time for a Sabbath story. Okay, Chris Sabbath is is a practical joker, and everybody knows that. <laughs> so the um, the first year that she'd ever come to Ohio Con, uh, Chris Sabbath was there. And Brittany Carvalski was there. She, she, Brittany, uh, Brittany. Brittany Carvalski, and uh, everybody came to the line. At the autograph session, they had everybody there for one big autograph session, and everybody's like, "Oh!" And Brittany, her flight had been delayed and delayed and delayed and delayed. <laughs> she finally got in at midnight, and we were waiting for her because she was so upset. And she walked in and goes, "And they lost my luggage." <laughs> <laughs> so she had a really bad travel day. So uh, Saturday, this is Thursday. Saturday, we're on an autograph session, everybody together, and everybody's going, "Oh, Brittany, I heard, and I'm so sorry." You say, well, you know, these things happen and everything. Brittany, that was just, I'm just that's just terrible. I'm really sorry that happened. Yeah, it's okay. And finally, one girl came through and said, you know, if you need to use my shower, you can. And Brittany would have said, what? <laughs> Chris had been at the far end of the table telling everybody, oh, you need to be really, really nice to Brittany. Um, basically, when she got here, the water in her room doesn't work. She's having, to use, she's having to go to the bathroom downstairs in the lobby, and she, she's not been able to shower all weekend. <laughs> so Brittany thinks they're talking about the flight delay. <laughs> so she goes, "Sorry, I'm having you." <laughs> so a couple, of, a few people later, everybody starts going, "Are you having a good time, Brittany?" Oh, no, we're having a good time. Yeah, I'm having a good time. Weird. <laughs> Finally, somebody says something about, well, I hope you've enjoyed your first convention. <laughs> that was like Britney's 15th or 16th convention. <laughs> and she's like, um, wh what do you mean? <laughs> like, Chris Evans said we need to be nice, this is your first convention. Sorry, <laughs> I'm <laughs> sad! I love Chris Evans. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, when he was working for at Overtron, this is a story that, that I will... I, I, I can tell the story. Chris loves. You've already started this. Into, this is the uh, this is the autocorrect story. All the guys who worked used to, used to room together. They used to live together. And Chris is a practical joker. So one day he got in there and who's the the, the um, I can't remember who his roommate was. His roommate was, but he was he was one of the heads of Overtron. He did like he, he had a job that was working directly with the Japanese. And and he did a lot of the contract stuff and the negotiation stuff. So Chris came home one night, late, and the guy's Blackberry was out. So Chris went to the bathroom, picked up his Blackberry, and went to the bathroom, and started adjusting the autocorrect. <laughs> like Am became the, uh, uh, V became the effing, <laughs> and Am became Am so gay. <laughs> and so, who was it that he did this to? Oh, Matt Pearsall. Matt Pearsall. <laughs> yes, tell us, tell us tell what happened. I told him about the autocorrect. Thank you. It's coke. It doesn't taste like coke. It tastes like coke. It's full of shit. I mean, wait, you're sitting in coke. I love I have to ask these questions before I start talking. Uh, so, uh, I guess Chris already told you, Chris, uh, Chris Sabbath, otherwise known as Sabat by people that don't know him, uh, is a horrible practical joker. And uh, one night he came home drunk from a club. Uh, well, no, because he, he, that's part of the story and he thinks it's funny. Uh, but he, at the time, this was before he and his wife were together, and he lived in what I call Nerdtropolis. It was him and three other dudes that all either do video game stuff, sound design, or work in anime. So it's like... Guitar Hero for days, too many gaming systems, it's still like nerd paradise. Well, so his roommate, Matt Pearsall, was a sound designer who was working on some of the Nintendo Wii launch titles. He was doing sound design. Well, so and that's important because of the next part of the story. Sabbath came in and grabbed his phone, took it to the bathroom, and decided to have fun while he was sitting on the toilet, like you do, and changed the words. <laughs> Oh, did you not, did she not know the story? No, she's never not heard this. Oh my god, you're going to love this, because... Is this the one you just told? It's one that I was telling you. Yeah, but it, like, yeah, I'm going to finish it. So, he changed uh, 
the to the effing, only it was the real word, the trucking, uh, only it wasn't that word, uh, and changed am to am so gay, and like made a bunch of other changes, yes. but doesn't remember most of them. <laughs> but this is how evil Sabbath is and how geniusly evil he is. Quietly, like silently, snuck back into Pearsall's room put his Blackberry on the cradle and synchronized it, <laughs> took it back off, and laid it right back on the table where he found it. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Well, so, and then laughed, like, <laughs> and just went to sleep, <laughs> like Sato would do. The next morning, Pearsall was on his way to the studio and decided to fire off a letter to, uh, I can't remember his first name, Fujikata at Nintendo. <laughs> They were waiting on stuff from the Wii launch stuff, and he goes, Hey, Mr. Fujikata, look, this is Matt Pearsall from Ocotime 5000. Look, okay. it's... No. It says, look, it's Tuesday, and I still haven't seen the check you promised me. Please get back with me ASAP, Matt Pearsall from 5000, which turns into, look, it's Tuesday, and I still haven't seen the effing check you promised me. And before he could get to the studio, he was getting bombarded with emails like, Mr. Pearsall, we are so sorry, Mr. Pearsall. And he was like, what is going on? And of course, when he gets back, he sees on his, because when he gets to Outlook, and you can see the whole message, and he was like, Sabbath! And the funny thing is, I even asked Sabbath, I was like, did you tell him about I'm so gay? And Sabbath goes, uh, here's the thing, man, I, I love playing jokes on people, but I have a, a really shitty memory. <laughs> so, he never fixed any of it. He's still discovering stuff. Yeah, yeah. Hey, okay, okay. Jessica. Oh. Yay, Jessica. Yay, hi everybody. This is the old school anime panel. Woo! Thank you for being here. Um, so let's do quick intros. So I'm Jessica Kavala, and um, I'm a voice actress, and I've been dubbing since 1995. Which means she's 20. I'm 20 years old. <laughs> Thank you, Greg. I, I effing love you. <laughs> I'm so gay for you. I'm so gay for all of you. I'm so gay for all of you out here. I'm just so gay. Um, me too. <laughs> um, <laughs> So anyway, um, I wanted to do this panel with people that have been dubbing for longer than a minute because um, things have changed over the years. But let's do some other introductions, starting with Mr. Tony down there. I'm Tony, all right. Um, voice actor. I've been voice acting since long before the night you started. <laughs> so Tony's 22. I'm 22. <laughs> That's my story, I'm sticking with it. All right. <laughs> Hi, my name is Josh Neely. I'm a uh, voice actor. I have, I've only been voice acting since around 2004. Only? I'm not an old school actor. Yeah. Isn't that 10 years? I can't math. Right. But isn't that 10 years? <laughs> yeah. I, I can't math. That's a long time, Josh. Yeah, it's not old school. It, yes. It's, it's yeah. semi-old school. It counts. Yeah, no, that, that was when Jessica asked me to do this. I said, I've only been dubbing since 2004. I am not that old school. In fact, side note, Josh and I started the same month, almost the same day, in the same in, in different cities, for the same company, for the same company, for the same, company. For the same gay. <laughs> I was, see, I'm glad you did that, Jessica, because I was going to say it only matters if you finish at the same time. <laughs> Closely the same time. <laughs> Don't want to go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I did, I said, I said, I said, That's it? No more introduction? Well, I, mean, I, I just said, you know, I'm, I'm uh, voice actor, ADR director, ADR writer. Yay. Uh, uh, um, I am this guy's younger brother. Uh, I've been, I've, I haven't been working in the anime industry in an old school fashion. I've been, well, I've been in this for almost 15 years, which is scary. But uh, I've been watching anime since I was a teenager, so that, and I'm 20 as well. So, I'm not, I'm almost 50. But, uh, no, you're not, because I'm only four years younger than you. <laughs> Grinder profile says I'm all no I'm kidding. <laughs> For the straight people, that's like Tinder, only not. <laughs> no swiping right. Uh, wow, I'm doing this. 
Uh, yeah, so I've been watching anime since I used to buy it on big CDs called laser discs. So, yeah, and I have Tony on some of them. Too. Yeah, some of my big CDs. So, um, I would love to hear. So, Tony, when did you start? Um, I was 82. Okay. Yeah. So I did an old school panel and it, yeah, well, yeah, don't all right, right. <laughs> go to hell, go to hell, love you. Um, so I, I did one of these panels with Amy Howard Wilson and, she, and wow. Amy, it, yeah, played uh, uh, Nova. Uh, Nova and Star Blazers, right? Wow. Wow. And so she said that when they used to dub, they actually used the reel. And mm -hmm. whenever they would have to retake a line, they had to stop and rewind it. Oh. Well, and not by hand. I mean. No, she said, she said by hand. Wow. They had some old machines at her studio. <laughs> so, so what was it like when you started? Well, it was a lot different in that, in that um, yeah, we used reel-to-reel -reel tape. Uh, so, uh, for instance, Robotech um, was on one-inch reel-to-reel tape, and you could have like seven characters per per tape, and there's like 30 in Robotech. So you can imagine they'd be taking tapes off, putting them on, and rewinding, and it would cha we used videotape, and we'd chase that. Um, there was also no audio indications. Now we use beeps, so we have beep, 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 and you talk. Back then, you had to eyeball it. So um, it was a lot slower. Plus now with Pro Tools, if you don't like the line, you just re-record it, and it's okay. Back then, you had to make sure that when you re-recorded it, you didn't record over the line before or after, or... And it happened Yeah, it's called burning, and engineers are getting a lot of trouble for that. Um, um, so yeah, it was a lot slower as a result. Yeah. Yeah. So when I started in 95, it, you know, it wasn't digital, um, and we used these things um, uh, for the scripts called uh, paper. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that's pretty much obsolete now. So it was really interesting. So well, just I, for, just for, I, it, it, yeah. it's at, uh, down at Sentai, you guys use the, the digital scripts? We then? do. Yeah, because yeah, the only people I found is, is you guys then, Funny, and yep. Bang Zoom. Everyone else is still on paper. Really? really? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah, Dumart do 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 uses digital too. Yeah. So when I, I came back into the voice acting world um, in 2013, and you know, the last time I had done it, I was using paper. And so I, I go into the studio and there are these, like, these dual monitors. And I'm like, oh, because <laughs> I, I did a show called Detonator Organ, which is like, what, 79 or 80? And I, that's not when I recorded it, but that's how old the show is. And I remember it was some studio in New York. It was like a one-off. And it was this little bitty TV, black and white, with lines running through it. And they didn't use the tones. It was just I had to try to match the flap and to like match the time code with the paper. And but the lines were like obscuring the mouth. So I was like, I can't see the sink. It was just like so freaking ghetto old. <laughs> so I think this is what I'm used to. So I, I come into to Sentai. Um, so I think the oh, first wow. show I did was Girls in Panzer when I when I came yeah. back to the world. Yeah, yeah. Same yeah. Thing. And uh, I was like, oh, these are huge screens. I'm like, wow, why are there two screens for the animation? And uh, Janice Williams directed me in that. And she said, well, one, one screen and one monitor is for the script. And I was like, the script is on a monitor? Like, where's the paper? I don't understand. It's, it's magical. And sure enough, like, the script was on the left-hand side and the animation was on the right. And my eyes just had to go back and forth. No more holding the paper. Because there was so... No more doing this. And the paper so, used to be so noisy. It was awful. I ruined so many of my own takes just with the gesticulation, like especially with Excel slide. You know, and like constantly like knocking the microphone and the paper flying and spitting while well, I still spit. <laughs> because I just didn't. But um anyway. Uh, there's a joke there. <laughs> Is because of Matt Greenfield. Yeah, no, Matt, that's yeah. absolutely Matt, true. Matt, when we did Gantz, oh. I, let's say I recorded three days. I would come in and we would have a script, and of course, you know, he's giving you notes and you're rewriting the lines in the margins and then trying to read what you wrote, and I write like a doctor. <laughs> and then the next day I'd come back and there'd be a whole new script that had been printed up for every episode we were recording. And then the next day I would come back and, you know, we'd make some notes. There'd be a whole new set of scripts, and Matt every day would make the corrections and then print up a new batch. No, you'd of print like scripts. four or five of them. There yep. several scripts. I remember that. And that's why Matt, by the end of Gantz, had a pile of scripts that was like taller than me in yeah. the corner. 
and because they, were like, they would just throw them on the pile as they became outdated. <laughs> and they were like, this is just killing forests. There was and practically a tree of paper. <laughs> <laughs> so now, when you record, now what we do is, um, the monitor that the actor sees with the script is, is directly attached to the director's uh, computer. So if the line doesn't work, I fix the line. The actor Watch sees it, it right, yeah, there. right there. No yeah, worrying about it, because God, if I had to write again and then read in that little dark blue yeah. what I wrote, my hand, I write like a doctor. Yeah. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. <laughs> and we're just saying, the only difference is, is that we have the script in the, in the position of the, night of the music stand. Oh. Instead of the music stand, you have the monitor there. And it's, oh, okay. It's huh. the same configuration as if you had paper, like but that. it's digital. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 I've yeah. worked both. It's, they're both about yeah. I hate the music stand. When we were working on Evangelion, I ruined the best take by leaning on it and I went, <laughs> while I was talking. <laughs> and Matt Greenfield was like, I'm going to hang you from the ceiling so you can't touch anything. Because I was always like leaning on stuff, and it was in the middle of a beautiful take. And I was like, things that you turn <laughs> Because you're always ruining takes because you just had so much stuff in the booth with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's working and it's just easier. Yeah. And something that Josh and I were talking about today in the Attack on Titan panel, um, how like a lot of times, I mean, you can all attest for this, you don't, you might not know what you're doing before you get into the booth. There's no studying. No. Back then, yeah. like with Aiden Gellion, with Cutie Honey, Road Explorers, uh, Orange Road Summers exactly. beginning, like some of my early, early stuff. This is, this is how it went back then. Jessica, we've got a part for you. First, you have to come in an audition, and I'd have to go to the studio, and I'd have to read for it, and then three or four days would go by, and then hopefully I was cast. Then I, then he would, Matt, he would say, okay, so we've got all of the VHS tapes. Come to yes. the studio, pick them up, and the scripts. Now, the script's only a raw translation. It hasn't been adapted yet, but we want you to get the character down and just try to sort of sink the lines and watch the videotapes. And I would sit in my little ghetto-ass apartment with, you know, eight, eight, and, and, and the VHS tapes only hold, held two episodes of anime, yeah. right? Yeah. And I would sit there with all the scripts, and I would write down, like, oh, this seems too flat short. I mean, and I was also working off of a raw translation, so it really didn't make sense anyway. And, and I'll never you forget, like... the job they pay somebody to do now. Yeah. I know. I'll never forget, like, there was one time, like, Matt was, like, annoyed with me. And I was like, I don't know, I was just messing up, I guess, a lot. And he was like, did you study? And I was like, yes, I studied, but it was a raw translation, so I couldn't really study it at all. But, I mean, it was really, really hard. And now it's like, I don't even know sometimes what show or the, or the part is that I'm going in for. There was no study. There was no VHS tape. And so I would have, like, a bag full of all these VHS tapes. And then they want them back. Did you bring back the VHS tapes? I'm like, oh, my God, do you have the VHS tapes? Like, it was, like, I still so, have like, some of mine. I, 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 I kept some. I kept some. I kept some. It's really kind of cool. Yeah. Well, the nice, the, I will say the nice thing now, though, as opposed to then, is that, okay, you're doing Excel Saga. Okay, well, what is that? Okay, well, you need to watch this. Now... You can find out so much information oh, on yeah. the show. Right, because you didn't have it back then. No, you didn't have, you didn't have the no. access to the internet back then. Yeah. No. And now you've got stuff like Siri and you've got... Oh, my God, Crunchy yeah. Roll. Like, yep. So when, we, when Josh and I started working on Free, they're like, hey, we want you to do this show. We're doing the second season. I'm like, uh, huh? <laughs> like, yeah, it's the second season. I'm like... What about the first season? <laughs> so like, and I know Free's like this big deal, so like, I don't want to screw it up. So like, I watched the whole first season. I realized, any Free people in the room? They're in a gay bar at the end of the credits, right? And it's definitely a gay bar. Okay, I'm not crazy. Good, okay, good, we can move on. Okay. If I learned anything doing my homework, they're in a leather bar. <laughs> But like, it was good because when I started recording, I already knew who the character was. I'd already seen a whole season's worth of the show, so I wasn't, I wasn't flying blind. You know, yeah. I was, I was really doing. I really knew. I was already familiar with the character and comfortable with it. And like, back then, like, you were lucky if you even could find a, like a wiki page on the show. Yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. Without spoiling things for you. Yeah. And even and, and these days, it's still hard to not get spoiled on some things yeah. or some shows. But yeah, yeah. I mean, just with the whole on, like you, you have this entire world of information at your fingertips yeah. now, and you know, even and yet we still use the ago, internet for cat pictures. <laughs> <laughs> and that, that also, and I, I will say this: I was gonna get a hit, hit, hit Tony on this. Um, well, don't hit. Also find, <laughs> also find, also find, also, don't you find as a director when the actors are able to research stuff, it makes our job so much easier. 
Yeah, it depends on the actor, but yeah. I work with an awful lot of newbies. Of okay, like, yeah, like I, first, I second, first, second, and sometimes if that confuses. I'd rather I'd rather mold them the character myself in the studio than have them go because then I can't break them of what they came up with ahead of time. Have to break them. The, but the, the experienced <laughs> actors, the real good yeah, the ones, real yeah, 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 yeah. They can watch and go, okay, I know what you're, where you're heading. Yeah, in fact, most of the ones that I, you know, the, the Matt Mercers, these guys, they, they don't you don't have to tell them. They go research themselves. Yeah, you know, exactly. they, they already know what's Mercer's. going on. Mercer, Crispin's the same way. Yeah, yeah. Crispin oh, tells gosh. me about the shows that I'm directing him. <laughs> <laughs> No, we didn't. We they didn't give Did us VHS tapes. Did you have character tapes. designs to look at or anything? Um, no. Uh, we had a lot of conversation uh, before we'd start. So instead of walking in the booth and you know five minutes later you're recording, we, you know we'd spend 20, 30 minutes kind of going through stuff if it was a main character, okay. and, and just going through it and then finding it in the first in the first sessions. But no, uh, that's been going on in LA since I got in there, and it has to do with piracy and yeah, lawyers yeah, yeah. mostly. So, Tony, I have to ask you, because yeah. we've got, several of us got to work with him, so what was it like to work with Carl back in the day? Because yeah. uh, uh, I love, as an anime fan, like, when, when I came into anime, like, there were a huge contingency of people that hated Carl Masick. I mean, there were whole sections of the internet planning his death and, like, all this mean stuff, and it was so funny, because when I met him... He's like, oh, so you're an anime fan, eh? And I was like, yeah. And he goes, so you probably think I'm the Antichrist. <laughs> and I was like, I thought it was so funny that Carl had such a sense of humor yeah, yeah, about what people yeah. thought about him. And he's actually like one of the most incredible directors I ever worked with. And the funniest thing about him is you find out later all those stories he tells you, they're all true. Yes, they are. Every yeah. single one of them. Yeah. No matter how far-fetched it sounds. Like, yeah. Uh, oh, anything. Like, he kept talking about Ed Asner being his, you know, oh, Ed Asner and I, blah, blah, blah. And then I read something that Ed Asner wrote about him, and I was like, holy crap, he really does know Luke yeah. Grant. You know, like, yeah. and, like, he tells all these wild stories, and you find out they're all true. So what was a young Carl Masick like? Much the same. Carl, um... <laughs> We call him crazy Uncle Carl some days, but yeah. Carl was a, a, a force of nature. Uh, oh, he just he would get a beat on something and he would just go for it. Um, he was also quite the rock on tour. He would he love to sit and hold court and tell stories. Yeah, yeah. Which the last time I saw him, that's what we did. Yeah, he told yeah. me a story about uh, baby some gangster that was trying to fund the film, and he found out it was a gangster. And he really, but he said the gangster looked like a six foot tall infant. <laughs> And he told the story, and I think I laughed for 20 straight minutes. I don't know if I heard most of the story. Was like, sorry. But Carl, Carl was, um, Carl was uh, 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 fanatic about his story, about, yeah, his, about, yeah, about how he wanted things done, and about how he was told. And he was certain. I mean, I've worked with very few people who were absolutely certain so much about what what he wanted, uh, which sometimes made it difficult because sometimes what he wanted really didn't work. Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, but damn it, he had to do it. You know. <laughs> Um, and, and I have to say one thing, and Carl, if those of you who don't know, Carl created Robotech and uh, yeah. a lot of other great stuff, but um, uh, Carl uh, was the reason I have a career. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, he, I, mean, uh, I tell people Carl's the reason people in America know what anime is. Yeah, yeah. but no, yeah. or even more directly than that, um, yeah. I, uh, I, uh, I had no experience. Zero. I had maybe two or three professional acting credits wow. to my name. Wow. Um, I'd done one voiceover. It ended up on television, but I'd done one thing with Secrets and the Fire Child. And, um, oh, and yeah. I just saw that. Thanks. Yeah. Oh, God destroyed me. <laughs> yeah, <it's, laughs> that was so sad. You're in that. Yeah, I'm the, I'm the sea prince. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. This is old school, I'll tell you. I feel like a, this is my own panel, and I feel like a dumbass. <laughs> It's yeah. Romeo and Juliet underwater. Oh, okay. it's horrible! It's beautiful! It's horrible! It's so... Oh my god, I can't... <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, you can't even... I can't even... I'm fangirling! Oh my god! <laughs> That's so cool. You know what's funny? Like, so I was really, really early in my career. I was doing a convention. I can't see Tony. Sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay, so my butt is in the air back here. A sensation not wholly unfamiliar to me. Anyway. Uh, 
This isn't Facebook. Uh, I, uh, I, I was going to a convention with Bob Bergen, and I said, I, he goes, oh, you're going to a convention this weekend. And I was like, yeah. And he goes, who's going to be there? And I was like, oh, Bob Bergen. He goes, oh, Bob Bergen, he's a very, very talented man. I taught him everything he knows. And I was just like, what? And it, at this time, I was just like, crazy Uncle Carl was telling another one of his stories. So I get to the con, and I see Bob, and I like, you know, it was my first time meeting him. It was fantastic. He's a really sweet guy. And, um... I said, hey, uh, old friend wanted me to tell you hi. He goes, oh, really? Who's that? I said, uh, Carl Masick. He goes, oh, wow. He goes, what did he say about me? I go, uh, he said he taught you everything he know. He goes, uh, it's pretty much true. <laughs> and I was like, what? Like, yeah, that's and that's, the, that's always the recurring story with Carl. Yeah. It's like, but it's so cool because he worked with so many people. He would tell us, like, I didn't know this, the girl that plays May in the original dub of Totoro is the girl that eventually went on to be Angelica in Rugrats yeah. and like, yeah. wow. so like he worked with so many people at the yeah. beginning of their career and like, yeah, we'll that's the thing, as a fan who hated him, like who hated him as a fan, I got to know this man as a director and he was the most fascinating, awesome person yeah. and like, now it's my job to like, anybody that hates on Carl Missing, I'm like, wait, let me tell you a thing or two. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and like, by the end of the story, they wish they would have met Carl. Yeah. Well, look, for so many good things. He hired, he hired me with zero experience to be the lead in his baby. <laughs> yeah. yeah. How ballsy is that? Yeah. You know? yeah. And uh, because of that, I, I continued. I mean, that yeah. was the beginning he of my believed, career, really. He believed I mean, it's in a, you in a way that like, you couldn't let him down because no. he hired me to play this big blue troll in something. And I was like, I just told the story. I was like, uh, I play little kids. He goes, okay, well, scream really loud and sound old. And I was just like, okay. And I just did it. And I was like, all right, sure, Carl. And, uh, and but he, he was just sure you could do that. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah just yeah. do this. Just You, you don't want to try? Do it. And I was like, okay. Like, he, had, he, had these, he had these grand visions of Robotech. He gave us all these letters. And I'm like, God, I wish I had it. Oh, we the fortune. But he laid out his vision for Robotech and where he wanted to take the story. That's so Because they were, they were planning to, do, to go into partnership and, and animate with the Japanese oh, wow. a continuing series, which we did three wow. episodes of before yeah. the finances yeah. changed. That was the Sentinels. That's where that came yeah. from. Yeah. And, um, and so he was... But, but, and, and it was this beautiful story where Rick goes back with Min Mei looking yeah. for a Robotech master yeah. and then have a baby, and the baby turns out to become the Robotech master, so the whole story is circular. Oh, wow. Uh, but he never got to do it. But he, he, was, he was amazing. Oh. Oh, Amazing, and sometimes yeah. really hard to work with because of that. Yeah, because he already like. Because this, yeah, this is it. I don't care. Yeah, it doesn't work. Make it work. I work with that's an actor and who's a brilliant actor, and sometimes that makes it hard because that person wants you to say the line they would say, yeah. like, and so it is hard when you work with somebody that's that much of a visionary. That's yeah. so cool. I love. But I learn a lot. I yeah. love hearing good stories about I, Carl. I love like, Carl. He's such a fantastic. Or what? Like yeah. we, those y'all that know, we lost him a few years ago to a heart attack suddenly. So like. Yeah. Uh, so we're keeping Carl alive. Hey, yeah. Carl, we're still telling your story. I couldn't like, get, they, they did a documentary on him and interviewed me for yeah. like three hours on it. I couldn't get through most of it. I was just like, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, Who I did it? Did Harmony yeah. do it? Did Harmony Gold do it? Or is it someone else? Yeah, it was Harmony Gold. Oh, that's awesome. I, I will oh. say, my, uh, one of my biggest regrets <laughs> in, in my career of voice acting wise is that I got to ABV and started working I think Carl was finishing his last show oh, in TV, right? Yeah. So I never got the chance to wear them. He was always very kind and very sweet and talked, spoke to me every time. He says, I'm going to use you the next thing I'm working on. I'm going to use you the next thing that, I'm working yeah. on. And then he had moved on. Yeah. So that, that was one of my really big disappointments was not getting to work with Uncle Carl. He yeah. gave me one of the cool. I had to replace somebody in a show that, like, he, uh, he <laughs> hired somebody and that person just didn't like working with him. I was like, no, I'm not going to do this, which is... Career suicide, definitely. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. Uh, and he's like, well, I don't even want to do this. And he goes, okay, well, I, get you, I gotta get you to do this thing. And I was like, uh, I don't want to take somebody else's part. He goes, well, it's gonna be you or this other guy. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I think I could do it. Like, <laughs> like, and while we're doing that, he told me, he goes, you know, he goes, you, you won't be the last person to ever play this guy either. And it was really cool because that's something that we do in anime that like, just because we do a show now doesn't mean we're going to do the next season of it no, or yeah, no. anything else. And he like helped put some of that to bed. He's like, look, you won't, you're not the only Romeo. There'll be 15 other Romeos too. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Oh man, no, I miss Carl. Like, yeah. We're doing all this uh, Carl talk. Like, oh, yeah, he's he's funny. Such a good guy. What was it like? <laughs> <laughs> Back to the secret. <laughs> what happened to you? Drink after this, aren't I? <laughs> That I was like, Sidious! What was it like playing the 
terrifying. Yeah? I'd never done it before. Was that your first piece? Yes. That was your first one? Yes. So that's the one you're talking about, that he, he gave you your first shot? No, he oh. saw that on TV and hired me off of that. Oh my God! So I, but so I had one job under my belt before I did that. Wow! Yeah. So fantastic. And um, well, thanks. It was weird because we dubbed completely differently. Tell me, tell that's what we were in a, we were in a large, uh, uh, like a prelay room, a, okay. a large studio rather than a small booth, and we uh, worked two at a time. Oh! So I was paired with the person who played Bibble. You were in the same room. We were in the same room. Okay. Yeah. So it was kind of odd because we were kind of dancing around who's going to blow the take, you know. <laughs> And then about the third day, the Japanese came, because it was a Sanrio piece, so the Sanrio right, people right, came right. in. And uh, they started complaining to our wife, the director, that our sync was bad. And, um, and have you watched your own show? <laughs> <laughs> Their sync is never on. No. Never. <laughs> but you know what's really interesting? Ryo Horikawa, the original voice of uh, is it Vegeta, uh, explained why the dub is, I mean, why the sync is so bad in a lot of the older shows. He said 90% of the time when they were working on the original Dragon Ball, they would have a drawing pinned to the wall in front of them. They had didn't even have key animation. Wow. And so, like, there were a group of people, did, yeah, people were like, I hear all this, like, titter, all of, that's not a dirty word. Uh, all of, all of, he said the dubbing and the animation were taking place in two totally different areas. Wow. And the twain shall not meet. Like it, it wasn't until afterwards that one person would go in and try to clean up the animation. Yeah. So it's like having one dude cleaning up like two people's mess. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, he taught. We did a really fascinating panel on AX called East Meets West, where we talked about how we did things, and then Horikawa would talk about how they did things, and we would fa find out. A lot of the same frustrations and or is the same, but like they get less, way less to work with sometimes than yeah. we do because we've already got finished product in yeah. front of us. We're doing it the second time. Oh, the that's, second that's, round, that's yeah. starting to change now. I've actually did a piece, yeah. a piece not too long ago that the first few, a couple episodes were still working on the pencils. We were dubbing, ah, we were dubbing cool. the pencils. So it pencil like sketches, the still sketches, yeah, yeah. yeah. in the video. Yeah. Now the timing was all set, yeah. but but um, that's really so cool. as as we get closer and closer to all shows being simul. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're well, gonna see more and more of that. Yeah, yeah they've got a ton up of that are like yeah. coming out of the exact same time. Yeah, I've got one so yeah, far. I expect two or three cool. more next year. Yeah. Is what they told me. So yeah, cool. Do we want to open the floor up for questions? Uh -oh. Yeah, I have a pretty broad question, I guess, but I'd like to know. I'd like to know. Uh, your opinions on anime then and now, and just just generally, like, do you like the stories you're working on now as opposed to then, or do you like them better now? <laughs> That's a really good I, 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 honest. I like I like anime better now only in that the technology that they're using yeah. to make the anime is current, where it, yeah. it used to be old. You know, old, old, old school relative to what was modern. So yeah. everything looks really good. It really sounds great. really good. Yeah, and the yeah. sound effects are no the longer sound those is weird so much different. 70s yeah. shing, you know, things. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, pew, 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 pew. And the amount and the kinds of anime that are, fine, that are making it over here are is a much broader genre. So, so there's yeah. a lot more to appreciate than we had back in the day. Yeah. Back then it was mechs and aliens, and that was about it. Yeah. As far as story-wise, I think it's it's a mixed bag because there are plenty of bad old shows. Like I used to collect, you know, laser discs, and like I make jokes about the show called The Humanoid that I hated. We paid eighty dollars for a laser disc, and there's a sexy girl robot on the cover, and there's no sexy anything inside the disc. <laughs> you, don't, you don't do that to a sixteen-year-old kid. <laughs> I didn't like girls, and I was still looking for a sexy robot. Like, like somebody's got to get naked in this, even if it's metal. But <laughs> There were shows like Akira and Tenshi Moyo and and like even in the, the like the next decade of my fandom like Fushigi Yugi, which is a fantastic show that almost you know now you say that and somebody looks at you like you've done a card trick. They're like, What's yeah. that? <laughs> but like, uh, but there's still shows. We just did a show from the New World and uh, like there's still great stories. I think Key, you know, Key that does Angel Beats and Fatale Memories and Little Busters, yeah. like. I think there is still great storytellers, and I think that's because in Japan, I think so much of the anime is about telling a story and not selling a cup that matches a Taco Bell. But it's yeah. like, yeah. and they do a lot of that, Dragon Ball, sure. Z. Uh, yeah. But it's 
it's still a form of storytelling, and yeah. I think that's that's well, it's based, it's based in manga form. more. You know, here, yeah, here yeah. they write books off of you know the the, 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 the answer stuff will come off the movie. Yeah. There, that's coming off the manga. The manga yeah. So there's more. It's, I think it's a richer world they're working yeah. with. That's, that's coming off the novels, the the um, uh, the, the light novels. Uh, there, there's oh, yeah. different genres of things that it comes off, not just the manga anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and that's one of the neat things when I was working. I was doing some not acting type stuff for Funimation for a while, I was doing product writing and stuff like that. And they said, I, Kodansha treats their anime differently than other co companies do. And somebody said, oh, because that's Kodansha. Kodansha believes anime is just a byproduct of the manga. Whereas so many uh, other, like Sunrise, the anime is the deal. Like anime, like Gundam, come on, like boom. But like Kodansha yeah, sells manga. That like makes they're sense. mostly manga and then they just, oh yeah, we'll do this anime thing. Like. And it's good, but like their their push is manga. There's definitely a push well. It's interesting because in the in the Naruto, because I, I, I do work, I, I do yeah, part yeah. of Naruto, and um, in Naruto the scripts always have notes coming back from Japan or from the producers. I don't know where they're coming from, but most of them is well. The manga says this, so you should say that. Well, the manga, so they kind of oh, wow. to drive the show back to the manga as much as wow, they possibly can. Scary. And sometimes it's impossible because the manga's a pre sentences yeah. and he's got four flaps. Well, in the <laughs> <laughs> Not to get on this tangent, but like the weird, the coolest thing that ever happened. I met the manga uh Chrono Crusade, fascinating, really beautifully sweet man named Daisuke Moriyama, and we were talking about the differences between the two endings. And I was this old school, you know, I was an old school dub hating anime fan. Like, I never watched any English, like, and so I was a big hardcore like manga reader. And like, he told me, I, I said, I go, I understand the manga is different from the anime. And he goes, Oh well, I wrote both endings. I was like, what? <laughs> and he, I was like, what? You know, like Kyle's mom moment. And uh, he said, well, you know, he goes, I think there should be a reason to do both. And he said, I had already told this story once. And he goes, I want you to read my manga and I want you to watch the show too. So why would I end this story the same way wow. twice? And I was just like, that's a little wisdom there. Uh. <laughs> and so then, now, anytime I'm like, yeah, the manga would be better, it ain't differently. I'm like, actually. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Something you guys hit on, uh, I just recently finished a show that was just announced Thursday, so I can talk about it. A show called uh, Nobunaga the Fool. That show is a great show. I cannot wait for you to see it. But I will say, this is one thing that was very interesting, and it took me a while to research and find out why. It was voted by, by fans of Japan the worst show of last season. <laughs> The, the show that I just did, Nobunaga the Fool, it's an amazing show. It's a really incredible show. And I go, why is, why is it voted the worst show? I know why. Because in trying to push marketing, the anime, <coughs> the manga, the light novel, and the stage play, oh my God. <laughs> all, all out within the same month. Oh. Oh. They thought, oh boy, we're just going to hit them with everything. <laughs> and as a result, they oversaturated people who didn't want to see it. Who cares about that show? Who cares about that show? We were a second no, but I, It's a really cool show. And so since we don't have the manga or the light novel or the stage play right now going, definitely check it out. <laughs> There's stage plays of a lot, stage plays and musicals of a lot of the shows. Well, uh, the, the, the like show it. that we did for uh, Funimation, uh, uh, Edo Rocket, is based on a play. Like uh -huh. that's And there's a lot of third wall breaking in that show where you turn in to look at the camera and like say something directly into the camera because that's what they did on stage. Uh -huh. They're like, wow. you know, they'd be playing the scene and they're like, what I really mean is blah, 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 blah. And then they start and they were like, I was like, why do they keep doing that? And they're like, it's based on a play and they did that a lot in the play. A lot of the songs. So yeah. Yeah, a lot yeah, of yes. It's really cool. Like I, I, another thing that I would really, that I, I'm not sure if they do it as much as they did back in the day. Mm -hmm. But like, you know, you have the, like, bringing up the light novel thing, Slayers and uh, Orphan, both of those oh, words yeah. were started off as light novels and yeah. then they were actually crossed over. Yeah. And both series and a lot of series also used to have tons and tons of radio drama and stuff. Yeah. Oh, like, yeah. Like radio yeah. plays yeah. and stuff There's like that. still a lot of radio dramas. Okay. Yeah. Well, dra and drama CDs. It's more drama CDs now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. CDs, yeah. Yeah. Just I like want to see radio I know, right? Like that just sounds like a lot of fun to be able to play with the characters like that and not have to worry about these. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, well, yeah. 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 My first voiceover thing was a radio show for PBS. That they oh, did really? the college. It was a, did the college thing. It was a people, places, and things. Oh, Maybe wow. like Bret Hart and things like that. But, uh, <laughs> I was like 18 and going, I don't know what this is. So, <laughs> Yes. I, have to, uh, I have to Google Glass right here. Okay, yes, yeah. Go ahead. Google Glass gives me to ask all the questions. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> Yay. 
Uh, I, I have a question regarding, uh, you know, we, we talked about sort of the old time where we were killing trees and we're trying to sync up the, yeah. the, the flips and flaps and you know, <laughs> I like that, the flips and the flaps. And everything else. Where do you think, as voice action goes, where do you think this is going in the next five years? Ooh, wow. Wow, that's a great question. You know, like well, technology is going to help. Uh, acting's acting. So what we do is going to stay pretty much the same. I mean, the, the biggest right. difference that I've seen in technology, it's really small. It's when everything went from 16 to 24-bit. We had to project a little more because uh, we have to fill up the track of the bandwidth uh, a little more. Yeah. But that was a, that's about it. Te technology is just making things faster. Yeah. And so I, if it. anything, it's, spe it's, 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 it's speeding, speeding up. up. It's speeding up. Yeah, because b back in the day, <laughs> I now have a cane. Um, you know, it, it was uh, oh my god, the work it, it took so much longer. The first the first four minutes of Excel Saga. Oh my god, took me eight hours. I believe it. Now, granted, the director made me do a thousand takes. Of <laughs> <laughs> but how many different ways can I do this? <laughs> Did you ever get the direction of like, uh, give me something else? <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> okay. Okay. Can, you, can you make that a little bit more blue? Yes. I, oh, uh, that I is will blow awesome. your face anyway. Uh, so, and, and, and granted, not, not, that, that's, that, that was a special case because not everything took that long. But my point is that, you know, we weren't digital when I was recording Excel Saga back in 99, I think I started yeah, there, or 2000, yeah. 2001. Um, and so it just took longer. And now you do a take, and the engineer immediately, and, and like back, back in the day, you know, you would do a take, and I would, I would sit there, and I would wait. And sometimes I would be sitting there for 20 minutes, and I didn't even have a smartphone to check. I would just be sitting there, oh, dee -dee 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 -dee, you know, waiting for the engineer to shift and da -da -da -da, compress or try to do whatever they could to make it fit. And then I usually ended up having to do, over, you know, do it again anyway. So it just took so long, and now it is so... Fast. Fast. So well, fast. not everywhere. Not everywhere. No, not everywhere. Because <laughs> <laughs> I work for two studios, one who works at the speed of light and one that works 30 lines a minute. I mean, 30 lines an hour. Yeah. And I will tell you that if you worked at Studio A one day and Studio B at the second day, you better have a smartphone. <laughs> because you, I literally am like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, even when I'm directing, if we're working on a slow project, sometimes they want us, they want me to slow down and do lots of takes, and we're maybe going 30, 35 lines an hour at that point. Yeah. And it feels like I just want to beat my head. Yeah, same Because it's like, this is just like, I'd like, we'll see, and this we're going to do forever to get this new fast, Naughty. This new fast way we record uh, at one studio eliminates that whole, could you give me 35 different... <laughs> Yeah. Because that's a moment in time that goes by in a millionth of a second on anime, but like, it's easy to lose track of like what you're doing and focus on that and do like the stoner like I just gotta get this perfect like. <laughs> and it, honestly, it's just is. literally like, uh, and that's it. And so when and we record gone. fast, we don't stress over. Uh, right. We stress true. over a shitty line. Right. Like a lot. You know, see like, that, and all of a sudden you go, oh no, that needs to be closed mouth. Okay, yeah, then, yeah, then, yeah, you, then, then you go. Right, right. <laughs> it's that quick to fix, yeah. yeah. You know, the other thing, though, that has really blew me away when I when I came back into the whole thing was this whole the Skype sessions for directing. Oh, so, again, yes. back in the day, you know, I got my cane and my teeth and my throw matcha. But, like, <laughs> but like, you know, you went into the studio to audition. Then you went home and you waited for two to three days and hoped that you were cast. Then you went in to record and you would record 15 to 20 lines an hour. And that's how slow it went. And now it's like, hey, because uh, I have a little home studio in my closet. I come out my gay. Um, when I'm in there or not, still a little bit gay. But anyway, um, you know, and I record my auditions and then I email them. And that is great. Like, even when I auditioned for Cutie Honey back in 98, go to guy, cast that show, and he wanted, he wanted all the auditions to choose who he wanted for Cutie Honey. We sent him a CD. We mailed him wow. a CD of nine different VAs. Auditioning for Cutie Honey, wow. right? Because G we didn't have Gmail. You couldn't handle email. All we had was AOL.com. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was your 9600 baud modem. Yes, that was it was. Super fast. Yes, it was. So now it's We're like I mean, I, I also work with Side Night and Happiness. If you guys know that. Woo! that. Woo! Yeah. 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 Best webcomic ever. They are just as twisted in the recording sessions. Man, let me tell you, and I and I have like so we'll, we'll be in my closet and we're doing a Skype session. I'm on I'm on their uh, 
their YouTube channel, just in a couple of their shorts, their animated yeah. shorts. Yeah. But uh, we just recorded a few more, and <laughs> those sessions are fun. They are they are messed up people in a wonderful, yeah. wonderful, beautiful way. I'm so happy to know because I'm such a huge fan of their. They are they are so fun. Um, but anyway, but that was something that never happened back then. First of all, I don't think Skype existed until no, somewhere in the 2000s. Yeah. So the fact that I can email auditions, I can work from my very gay closet uh, with girls on my head. And, um, and sometimes I don't have pants on because it gets hot in there, not because I'm hot, because it's just really hot in my closet um, for soundproofing and whatnot. So um, it's just, it's just, so I, I guess in a, trying to circle back, um, it's, it's, it's come such a crazy long way. I mean, uh, emailing auditions and emailing things, you know, that yeah. are larger than one meg, never, ever, yeah. I thought could happen. So that's, that's opened up a whole new world of how to be able to work. Well, even doing pickup lines, because yeah. if we do a show at yes. Funimation, we live five hours away from Funimation, right. and driving five hours to do what is considered ten minutes of work is ludicrous. And they're not going to pay you but, for driving in like but that. But there's so. a studio, Mint, uh, Minty Fresh Studios, which is run yeah. by our friend Afshar Karat. Like, yeah. they use Afshar Studio, and they're like, hey, we're going to send you a scratch track. Can you get Chris Patton to say it this way? Yeah. And he's like, absolutely. And they just, he just bills them for the time, but we don't waste the five hours on the road. Yeah, that's and, awesome. Yeah, it's yeah, super I just, cool. I just saw a show that I just, that I just did, just finished, um, Monica Real mispronounced something, and we didn't catch it until we were proofing. And I was like, oh. okay, this one word is vital to this show. If she mispronounces it once, they will eat us for lunch. <laughs> so I called her and said, Monica, you mispronounced such and such. And she goes, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, send me the line. I'll re-record it. She sent me four different tapes. It's like, it's in. Good. Done. Yeah, yeah. Uh, she, she, had, she works with the uh, Ocratron so much. Yeah. I'm sure she just went in and it's like, she just went in today. Can you record this? Yeah. Yeah. Send it to yeah. me. Email it. Yeah. Yes, Circling back to Excel Saga. Yay! Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. about the secret episode that wasn't very released because my friend had one of those copies. I don't know what you're talking about. No, and I'm, I'm, I don't know what you're talking about. I really don't know what you're talking about. Uh, well, there was the end of the series where they kind of wrapped everything up, and then they had an extra episode where there was a lot of naughty, more... Wait, no, you know, I was, only, I was only in the first three volumes. Are you talking about episode the hentai episode? Yeah, episode yeah, yeah. I was, that was a different Excel. So. That's a different, yeah. That's yeah, what I'm only in the first three okay. volumes. So sorry, I can't tell you. Yeah. But Jessica does not hate hentai. I know this for a fact. I do not hate hentai. <laughs> At all. She may have and tangled with a tentacle or two. You know, I have a closet. I have a closet and we make magic without being yeah, talking. Right. It's an interesting closet. You are all welcome to join me in that, that closet. That is the best way to describe We make magic without pants on. And in shorts, literally. <laughs> All right, so um, Josh, you pick, pick someone to answer. There's two hands up, three hands up. There. There's several hands up. Oh, all the hands up. Um, so we were doing this all this talk about the old school stuff, but so when, what, have any of you had this role? I'm sure you have, but can you, can you give us an example of a role that you really, really wanted to get and someone else got it? I think we all have 90 of them. Yeah. yeah. Every single My, role you audition is, for. Uh, I, yeah. I, I got to go in and read for Spike on... Uh, oh, oh, my God. God. Oh. You're the sea prince. You should get yeah. everything. Just like this. God damn it. So fun. Thank you. I'm going to you home. <laughs> So I, yeah, I did. I obviously didn't get that, but I was. I'm looking at the script, going, "I'd hire Steve Bloom for this." And yeah. sure enough, he's the guy that got it. So. That brings me to my point. There have been so many times that there are roles. Of course, there are roles that I would love to have been in, and shows I'd love to have been a part of. But you know what? I go back and I watch those shows, and 99 times out of 100, I'm like, "Wow, that person is phenomenal in that," and I'm so excited that they were cast. Um, you know that, that it's hard for me to go, "Oh, that should have been me." That you can't, as an actor, you can't have those kind of regrets. It's really self defeating Yeah, yeah. Bob, Bergen, Bob Bergen just posted a thing on this. He's like, that he, and I love Bob. Like, I don't ever get to see him nearly enough. But Bob wrote this thing about how this is an industry that should be based on gratitude. That you should be grateful for the work you do get. Yeah. Uh, like, uh, there were 
there were several shows licensed by Funimation at one time, and Attack on Titan was one of them, and I can't say what the other one is, because we're going to announce it next weekend. Yeah! Uh, but, like, I, I was not allowed to audition for Attack on Titan, and I got really butthurt about it. I'm like, yo, dude, what the F? But the funny thing is, the only show I cared about during that licensing blitz, I ended up getting one of the leads in that show. And so, you can't, like, you can't stress on <coughs> something you didn't get because something that was yours is coming your way anyway. Yeah. And so, like, if you get, if you get, there's, I know this, it's, a lot of people get this, it's contagious, it's called butt hurt. But <laughs> if you get too much butt hurt, you might not be, you might not be in good form when that good role comes your yeah. way. Yeah. And you're so, you're so raw about missing out on one opportunity that you don't just go four on the floor for this other part and get it, you know, like, and I love, I wouldn't trade, like, I, I'm glad other people are working on Attack on Titan because I love the announcement we're about to make. Well, well plus, in, in LA at least, not me, but a lot of the people who are like, the really hardcore uh, voice actors, the tra Travis and then uh, Travis Willingham and those guys, they're, they're in the mainstream stuff. They're doing 10 to up to 15 or 20 auditions a week, yeah. occasionally yeah, a yeah. day. Yeah. So if you miss one, there's 32 others sitting right here. So yeah. it's, you know, it's, that's it's all that's like crying about dropping one French fry. I had, I had to talk about that, but there there is a story similar to what Greg said. Uh, there was a show that, that Funimation did uh, that was very very dialect heavy, and it's not Italian. Uh, those who know my work know that I do a lot of dialect work, and I was a little offended that I wasn't uh -oh. asked to audition for this show. Uh, it was a show about a demon butler. <laughs> and, and I was, you know, it's all dialect work, and I was a little offended. So I was up um, recording on Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, and this guy that I think I had met once named Ian comes bursting into the room and he goes, Oh my god, you're the dialect guy from Houston, aren't you? And I said, Um, I'm from Houston and I do dialect work. I would not call myself a dialect guy. <laughs> no, 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 no. no. You, because I really wanted to be a part of Black Butler because it was a dialect show. He said, no, no, no. Do you do Indian? And I said, um, American Indian or India? He goes, India. I said, Brahmin or Oxford Indian? He <laughs> goes, <laughs> the fact that you know there's a difference tells me you're probably the person I need. <laughs> Can you please come audition for me right now? And and apparently the person that had originally been cast had not demonstrated his accent. The guy that was originally cast as Prince Soma in, in Black Butler, which is the role that I ended up playing. And he wanted to do the entire thing like a boo. <laughs> and this poor director who is a, who, who is a dialect yeah. coach in Dallas who's phenomenal with dialects. <laughs> this guy got in there and he was like, <laughs> so so that that is how Ian, Ian Sinclair and I became dear dear friends because I knew the difference between Oxford educated and Brahmin. <laughs> I'm, I'm impressed actually. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna give, I'm gonna give something away. I get commented on all the time. Uh, Dance of Vampire Bond, uh, several other things I've done. I get commented on the, my um, Singaporean dialect. Or my Mandarin. My Mandarin is. No, 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 it's spot on. Here's the thing my Mandarin is not Mandarin. <laughs> Who here has ever seen a movie called Murder by Death? Okay. My Mandarin is actually just me doing my impression of Peter Sellers as Victor oh, Wong. Wow. <laughs> it's a bad 1930s, oh my God, bad, yes. bad 1930s so Chinese, and everybody goes, oh my God, your Mandarin is so good. And I'm like, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Double negative, I thought. It's right in here. It's, it's, not the, it's not the RL switch that you normally think of when people do Asian dialects. It's actually more of a tap jar on everything. Wow. And that, that's all it is, but everyone's like, oh, your Mandarin is so good. I'm like, thank you. <laughs> 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 yeah, uh, his hand has been up for a long time back there. Oh, okay, cool. I was like, I was waiting so long, I was just like, no, man, it's not worth it. <laughs> um, 
I just wanted to ask you guys a little bit of a personal piece here. You guys have all been titans of the industry for quite a while. I wanted to know. Did you say titans? Titans. Titans that eat people. Because I'm uncomfortable with that. I guys. Sorry about that, guys. I'm a teacher. I have to project. Anyway, um, guys, I just wanted to know. You guys have all grown throughout the industry. You've all come to find something that makes you distinctly you. I just wanted to make certain, I wanted to figure out that as you've come to find yourself as actors, if you found something when you interact with your fans that makes you distinguishable from one another, do each of you talk to one of your fans in a different way? I'd like to know interesting ways that you interact with us, because we are people. Are you coming from a place of not having been treated as a person? <laughs> I'm from a poverty background, so maybe? <laughs> okay. Well, I talk to everyone the same. I'm a little off, and I don't tend to censor myself. I mean, I am trying to right now, because this is PG-13. But um, I, I love talking to everybody. I'm a crazy extrovert. Um, so, if anyone comes up to me and they appreciate my work, or just, or, you know, a fan of the, of the industry, or, or of, of, of anime, I mean, I, I talk to them like I talk to anybody. Son of a. I mean, I, <laughs> yeah, I don't change myself in any way. She has very few filters. I really, I, I, I'm actually being There's really one. good right There's now. Yeah, she's I'm, using it right I'm now. using the <laughs> one filter, filter I have. It's a little dirty. Um, it's got some film on so it. You can just scrape that filter. shit uh, stuff <laughs> off. But I, I am using the one filter. It's, it's slowly leaving. Right now. Uh, it leads at the end. Like okay. anything else. Alright. <laughs> we're all people. Yeah, you're right. We're all people. So all of us are individuals, and so we deal with each people individually as ourselves. So I just try to come from, like you were talking about the gratitude. I try to come from gratitude. I'm really lucky yeah, yeah. I'm sitting right here. And, um, and uh, that's what I just try to do and, and make sure I show gratitude to the people who have, you guys, who. They allow me to do what I do. So mine's a little weird. It involves Henry Rollins. <laughs> 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 uh, I met so I'm an old punk rock kid. I like grew up as a little punk rock kid, and I got to see Black Flag when I was uh, 14 or 15. And we met Henry Rollins, my buddy and I, Little Richard, which is not Little Richard like Tootie Fruity, Oh Rudy, Little Richard. It's just my little skater friend whose name was Richard. We were both short. I was Little Greg. He was Little Richard. Anyway. Uh, we were forming this, we were going to have this band called Big Angry Men, because we were these two little kids that were at so we thought that was really funny. Uh, we, neither one of us played instruments. But uh, when we met Henry Rollins after the Black Flag My War show, we are like, and like, when you're little, you don't know that bragging about being in a band to a dude that's like pretty famous is kind of lame. And he was like, hey, hey little dude, what's up? And I was like, that was a good show. My friend Richard and I are gonna, we, we're starting a punk rock band, and instead of being like that douche rock person, which so many, you know, so many musicians are that douche, he goes, well, good little man, he goes, there should be more punk rock bands, especially the little kid punk rock bands. <laughs> and like, if you ask Henry Rollins today, he probably doesn't even remember, because he was, he was, that was a pretty crazy night. <laughs> that simple. My friend Kathy was involved, but, uh, like, but the thing is, like, it doesn't matter that he doesn't remember. It's not important to me that Harry Rollins would remember me. It's that at a time when I was a little kid, somebody said something that was encouraging to me. And so, like, now, it doesn't matter how tired I am or how worn out I am. If somebody, like, wants to show me their drawing, like, I'm a douche if I'm like, no, nah, kid, I got something to do. Like, yeah. I always go back to Henry Rollins with the Budweiser in his hand, like, yeah, you should be in a punk rock band, little dude. Like, and so, like, and it, dude, that took five seconds out of his day. There's that, there's this Canadian phrase uh, in, like, uh, Manitoba region where they say it only takes two seconds to be polite to anybody. That's a really good piece of advice to live by. Like, and in those same two seconds, you could encourage somebody to, you know, believe they can do something. So I always try to remember that when I when I see people or when I meet people and like just see people eye to eye. Besides, if you think you're here and other people are here, the party is down here. Yeah. If you want to go to the party? This is where the party so is. Lower your standards. That's what we're saying. Thank you. Uh, thank you for being a teacher. 
Um, Seriously. Yeah. That, that, that Lowering my thing. standards is a little bit something that I can't get behind, <laughs> but hey. <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 thank you for being a teacher. Um, I have worked as a guest artist for 20 years with schools. Um, I find working with young people some of the most rewarding stuff you can do. I will tell you this, since I'm not a, a technically employee of any district, um, I don't let my students call me yes sir. I, I, they do not call me Mr. I'm just Chris. And this is kind of the way I am with everything. Um, you made me call you Mr. I, well that's... <laughs> <laughs> I am Mr. Mayor's or Yes Sir. That puts me here and them here. Which makes them uncomfortable. But here's the oh. thing. You will never ever meet as a human being until you're here. And I was raised, uh, our parents raised us with the idea that you are no better or worse than any other person. And that's the way I try to be. I try to approach people the way they approach me. Uh, yes, you certainly have some people that approach you very rudely at conventions. But if somebody approaches me in a spirit of goodwill and, and kindness and niceness and excitement, I'm going to match that energy. I'm, I'm always going, going to try to meet that. Yes, I will say, though, like Rex, there is a time that I was like, excuse me, not now. And that's when I've got to go to the bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> There's will, some things. Like, some things take precedent over anything, and my, my going potty is one of them. <laughs> Sometimes you just got to grow a tail. I try to <laughs> Just think about that for a second. There's two things, um, as John would say, I'm a huge proponent of Dan Millman's book, The Way of the Peaceful Warrior. And, and his conflict resolution system is very simple. You meet everything with compassion and humor. And that's kind of the way I try to meet, meet everyone. I, 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 I try to be nice to everyone. My girlfriend said, you've never met someone that you don't think is a nice person. Because everyone we meet, we meet you go, they walk away and you go, He's such a nice guy. <laughs> and she said, you really do think everybody's nice? I'm like, I do. So. Oh, uh, I screwed up. Wait, it's not Manitoba. It's Alberta. Is where, yeah, it's Alberta. Okay. You know, There's somebody from Manitoba right here. So I was like, ah, wrong province of Canada. <laughs> Cal Calgary's Alberta, right? Yeah, Calgary. It's Alberta. Okay. What, is, what is our time? Because I think we're almost out. Yeah. Do we, we have time for one more question? They didn't, they didn't answer. Oh, my God. Oh Joshi, are you grateful for sitting next to me? I, I didn't rope you once. I'm actually kind of disappointed. Okay. That. <laughs> there we go. Well, I mean, I, there's nothing else that I can add to that that hasn't already been said, really. Uh, I, I had a very similar experience growing up that Chris and Greg did. I was very fortunate to be raised in a household of artists, sort of, of very caring people that yes. told yeah. me that I could... That, that always made a point to make sure that I knew that I could do whatever I wanted and, and as long as I was willing to put the work into it and, and just come at it with a positive attitude. And one of the easiest ways to do that is to be nice, just to, and to yep. treat yep. everyone treat everyone the same way that you want to be treated. And yep. that's what it's I try hard. to do. Yeah. It's really not. If it weren't for you guys, all we'd be doing is talking into a microphone that's pretty much it. And so drinking. you're the reason why you said I'm drinking. And, and that too, and taking Xanax. Not that I <laughs> But no, seriously, um, the reason why I exist, not to be all for but it's because of, of people appreciating my work. So without you guys I'm, I'm nothing. We love you guys. We love, love you. Guys. Thank you very much. Thanks guys. Love you guys.